the sprawling sugarcane plantations spread across tracts of land in Busoga. Out of 100 districts in the subregion, 10 are engaged in large-scale sugarcane farming to feed the appetite of factories that have sprouted as decades of a monopoly of Kakira sugar works and Lugaze factory could not keep up with the demand. Uganda's domestic demand exponentially grew in the early 2000s, driven by consumption in emerging urban centers and demand across the neighboring countries such as South Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo. This prompted the entry of multiple investors in the sugar production business that set up new factories in the Busoga subregion. Mayuke Sugar Factory, Kamuli, Kaliro, GM Sugar were also attracted to the cheap cane across the sugar belt, which they could instantly crush to produce sugar whose demand was rising. However, disruptions in exports and dumping of cheap smuggled sugar onto the market, peppered with a curtail permit system meant to cheat farmers, have pushed players towards the cliff. My objection to stop supplying is the level of corruption exhibited at that area. Getting a permit is a struggle. You must give money. Getting a vehicle is also another hassle. You must give money. When the vehicle moves to the yard, there is a lot of corruption. Current domestic demand for sugar is estimated at 380,000 metric tons, which remains below the prevailing production of 550,000 metric tons per year, being produced by the entire 15 sugar factories located across the country. With a lot of cane on the market, Prices turned volatile and the prices of a ton of cane fell from 180,000 shillings to 120,000 shillings before it dropped to 110,000 shillings in July last year. In early July this year, prices once again fell from 110,000 shillings to 104,000 shillings and have now dipped to 96,000 shillings. Even at that low price, millers in Busoga are still incapable of consuming cane, partly because of the limited production capacity. I said that two kire, that you manik banga nebi kaje bitu alibere. Tiki sobola akolachi kuviria. I had to antutu keki sere antu banga avantu saawe no to starve to starve inga nachi ne ne as sugarcane in the fields matured way past their actual required juice content duration of two years, desperate sugarcane growers and suppliers opted for the neighboring Kenyan market, whose millers are also starved of cane. Kenya, which was previously consuming Uganda's cane in July last year, briefly imposed a ban on the importation. Hundreds of 40-ton trailers laden with sugarcane produced in Uganda were for weeks stuck at the Busia border after they were denied entry. According to the region, um, sugarcane, just like any other, any other agricultural product, raw uh, material or raw product, raw agricultural material, not processed, is supposed to be cleared. And what was there is that the government had put some restriction on it. That is Kenya and Uganda. But this restriction was based on clearance by agriculture. The ban was lifted later in December 2020. But the unpredictable market gave rise to cartels who continue to enforce a permit system for one to be able to sell cane to a factory. Those who buy the cane from the farmers usually pay them as little as 60,000 shillings per ton, which is 36,000 shillings less than the market value. Where the farmers do not sell their cane to the permit brokers, they are compelled to supply their cane to the factory through a permit holder who takes a commission off each trip delivered. The commission off each trip is usually 100,000 shillings. With such an exploitative system, many households who had borrowed from commercial banks and Shylocks have been pushed further into a state of abject poverty. The Uganda National Household Survey, released on June 2, 2021, indicates that although there is a significant reduction in poverty levels in Busoga, the subregion still contributes the largest percentage of poor people in the country at 14 percent. According to the 2016 Demographic Health Survey, it indicates that up to 50 percent of children admitted in Busoga's hospitals are severely malnourished. Figures from the Health Ministry suggest that 53 percent of children in Busoga are anemic and that majority of them are born weighing less than 2.5 kilograms. 
Farmers in the sub-region across 10 districts that grow sugarcane want to strengthen their cooperatives and build robust systems to overcome the exploitative system. The cooperative societies have morphed into what is now the Greater Busoga Sugarcane Growers Cooperative Union. At least 70 grassroots cooperative societies are now providing cane to larger cooperatives. And with the Uganda Development Corporation, UDC, a state-owned investment vehicle, in renewed attempts at undertaking the funding of commercial projects, the Greater Busoga Sugarcane Growers Cooperative Union hopes that it can benefit. To corruption, we decided to form cooperative societies, and through our leadership, we negotiated, we negotiated to start delivering sugarcane to Atiak Sugar Factory which is corrupt free. Our working is that we don't demand anything when we are giving you a harvest permit, when we are giving you a delivery note, which escorts the vehicle to attack. So that's where we are. Perhaps the challenges we have in that venture is that the vehicles are few. Our local farmers here have no financial capacity to hire vehicles. But at least we have been getting some vehicles. We have had a few challenges. One, it being a government aid, we could not allow people being paid by cash. We are paying through the bank. Most of our peasant farmers get challenges. They don't have bank accounts. But we thank God. We have sensitized most of them, and they are now getting bank accounts. Another thing is transport to attack is very, very expensive. We had challenges advancing people money, and so we told them you carry the the grant operates in such a way that after carrying your cane, we refund your transport. So the very, very poor are finding problems, funding themselves. But to that one, uh, Oriel Sugar has aided us with some trucks, which are helping those very, very poor people who cannot hire trucks. Key in this drive is to cushion the backward linkage of production to actual processing or value addition, which is seen as critical in sustaining agribusiness ventures. With emerging factories across the country, perhaps there is a silver of hope for Busoga farmers. Atiak Sugar Factory had its commercial production delayed for over a year owing to lack of sugarcane after a suspected arson attack on its plantations. The Uganda Development Corporation has a stake in the Atiak Sugar Project based in Amoro District. This has emerged as an opportunity for the Greater Busoga Sugarcane Growers Cooperative Union to enter into a commercial undertaking to support the new factory with sugarcane supplies. At the moment, we had to kill uh, two birds with one stone help the ex ferry out to the excess cane in Obsoga because there is excess and farmers are suffering and then create an impact then but also help the factory in uh, Atiak to be operational because it didn't have adequate import. Supplies to Atiak Sugar, estimated at nearly 15 billion shillings over a year-long period, is expected to provide more than 3 million tons of cane to the miller in northern Uganda. Most of this cane would have gone to waste, but how sustainable is this? Since we have started, we bought a subsidy with, for the, with, the, with the government. We started taking sugar cane to Atiak. The crowd of sugar cane and the people's crying in Usoga for sugar cane it has now decreased or at least somehow. Around that. Is it sustainable? No. It's not a sustainable because in this case, government had to come in and subsidize the transport component because it wouldn't make business sense to transport can all that long. So uh, it's not sustainable. Sustainable solutions are to grow the can in Atiak and the Lamo efficiently and supply the factory and to construct farmers' factories in, in Obsoga in order to increase on the crushing capacity. What we lack on the government, who are to take care of the land, they to have a mix of to allocate the Kajatiaka. Era nganzo kama koge na to take care of the Kajaka. Na kiaka kaja, nda ifatu bere kuari funa kumukisa. Ayo rokuvanga ebika dobi inji, abantu abayambi waku batini no. Unko bi abantu abayfuni mu. Kwaba wakafuna kubali inga kasamu, households. Aye ngate, amaka gali nebikadu, gali over 3 million people. To corruption, 
we decided to form cooperative societies and through our leadership we negotiated we negotiated to start delivering sugar cane to Atiak Sugar Factory, which is corrupt free. Our working is that we don't demand anything when we are giving you a harvest permit, when we are giving you a delivery note, which escorts the vehicle to Atiak. So that's where we are. Perhaps the challenges we have in that venture is that the vehicles are few. Our local farmers here have no financial capacity to hire vehicles. But at least we have been getting some vehicles. The Greater Busoga Sugarcane Growers Cooperative Union is persuading government that the cooperative societies should be strengthened at the grassroots as part of a poverty alleviation program. But key industrialization indicators must be met including quality of inputs at farm gate level, agronomical practices, skills, diversification systems and environmental safeguards. The Greater Busoga Sugarcane Growers Corporation Union says that Uganda Development Corporation, UDC, needs to enter into a joint venture with farmers to commence production of power ethanol, utilizing the abandoned sugarcane available in the subregion. The cooperative union says an $11 million investment in a modern power ethanol plant with a 10,000 litre producing capacity if set up in the sugar belt could absorb thousands of tons of sugar power each other day. Through this initiative, the farmers hope that the cost of production, supply and return on their agribusiness ventures will be managed well to realize profits. In April 2020, President Museveni signed in to low the sugar bill. Amongst its key objectives is to have agricultural production directly linked to milling to avoid a sugarcane supply glut, which is detrimental to farmers.